morning everyone and welcome to Willie the Ida Adobe State Historic Park. My name is Mrs. Pooley and today when we go across the Bridge of Time we're going to be stepping back into the 1850s and exploring what it was like to live in early pioneer California. Now I understand that some of you have been reading Flat Stanley's Escape to California by Jeff Brown. Well it just so happens that Flat Stanley mailed himself to the park and he's going to be joining us on the tour. You're going to see him along the tour and he's going to be in some funny places. Now, in the 1850s, there were three big things that they did not have that we have today. Can you guess any of the three? Right, electricity was one. And another one was modern transportation or cars. And the third one was something that we use in our homes every day and that was indoor plumbing. Now when we cross over the bridge of time, we're gonna be looking for clues to see how the pioneers lived without these big three things. And I want you to look for Stanley too. Well, dog my cats, there's flat Stanley across the bridge of time right now. He's waiting for us. Let's go over to 1852. <laughs> wild country and you couldn't just go to the supermarket to buy your food. So many of the pioneers brought seeds across the prairie with them to start their gardens. Other pioneers wrote home to their friends and family to please send seeds to start their plants. Now without refrigeration the plants had to be able to be dried or they had to be able to be stored for some time. So we have a garden right here. Let's go inside and see what's growing. Come on. Mrs. Lovato. Good morning. Good morning. And Mrs. Hardwick. Good morning, Mrs. Pooley. I see that you are hard at work here, but do you mind taking a moment to show us what's growing in your garden? Absolutely. So we have bull nose peppers, yellow tomatoes, cayenne peppers, and the three sisters growing. The three sisters? Yes, Mrs. Pooley. Corn is the first of the three sisters. The corn grows tall so the beans have something to climb. And then here are the beans right here going up the corn. Oh, yeah, I see them going right up. Mm -hmm. For its part, the beans pull nitrogen from the air and put it in the soil for all three plants to use. This is called nitrogen fixing. And nitrogen here. is a really important nutrient for all healthy plants. Sorry, Mrs. Lovato. I was so excited about the squash, and here's our third sister. So the squash has two jobs. To keep the ground damp with its big leaves, and because the stems are prickly, it helps keep animals away like raccoons. I see. When they all grow so well together, it seems like a real benefit to us. It is, and served together, they make a complete meal, and we have the corn, oh. which then can be dried for later use, or you could eat it fresh. We have beans, and I don't have any beans to harvest this morning, but I have some dried ones to show you. Oh. So you can eat the beans fresh, or you can dry them for the winter. For cooking for later? Absolutely. And then that third sister is squash. Oh, and that looks like horsehair squash. It is. It's delicious, and that keeps pretty well without refrigeration. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All these together, when you serve them together in a meal, gives you the complex carbohydrates, it gives you fats, and it gives you protein. A complete meal. Complete. Now, the only thing is, it gets a little tough being able to eat this every single night, day in and day out oh. for supper. So, Mrs. Lovano so solved that for us. She planted marjoram rosemary, and mint, so we can flavor our meals and make them more interesting. Oh, is that Mrs. Lovano? I know. I know. Is that Mr. Stanley I see climbing the corn like a bean? Oh, that it is. is. Maybe he's trying to help with the harvest. Maybe. Maybe. Stanley is always trying to help in his own way. 
Well, let me tell you, Mrs. Lovano is a real clinker when it comes to harvesting and putting things up for the winter. Well, it looks like you two are going to survive out here on the frontier. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing your garden with us this morning. I, I must be going, but it's wonderful to see you, Mrs. Lovano. And thank you, Mrs. Hardwood. Thank you, Mrs. Cooley, for visiting. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Just the way they grew their food and what they grew was a big clue to us about no electricity and so no refrigeration. Let's see what other clues we can find. Aha! Uh -huh. What do we have here? Well, in the 1850s, indoor plumbing was not common, and so pioneers had to find other ways to go to the bathroom. So what they did is they would dig a big hole, and they would build a, a small little house like this over it, far and out and away from their house, so as to distance themselves from unpleasant odors. Looks like Stanley might need a little private time. Let's see what else we can find. What do you suppose this big adobe, or actually little adobe, is for? Any guesses? Well, the pioneers used to hunt and raise animals for meat, but without refrigeration, they had to preserve it. So sometimes they would use salt and they would draw water out of the meat, or sometimes they would build a smokehouse and they would hang strips of the meat inside of the smokehouse from hooks or on a rack, and they would light a fire and they would make it really smoky and they would smoke the meat over a period of a few days to really draw out all the moisture and preserve it. What they finally ended up with was something like, like beef jerky. Come on. Look at this big cauldron. This is a big clue. In the pioneer times, with no electricity, they had to find other ways to make light within their homes. And so they made candles, and they would use a big cauldron like this. They would fill it with tallow, which was animal fat. And they would heat up that tallow and make it really melted. And then they would take a willow stick or some sturdy stick with twine on it, and they would repeatedly dip it into the melted tallow, adding layer upon layer to their candle. Now, looks like Mr. Stanley is ready to make his own candle. Let's go inside the adobe. Come with me. Here we are at the adobe home. Come inside. This adobe was built in 1852 and the pioneers used materials that they found right here to build the adobe bricks. They used sand, clay and hay to construct the bricks and build the home. Now, many pioneers lived in this home. The children would sleep upstairs in the loft. There's Black Stanley up there already. And the parents would sleep down here with the babies. This is a rope bed. So it has a wood frame and then ropes that the pioneers made themselves that are suspending the mattress of the bed. Now, as you already know, we don't have indoor plumbing. So they had to haul water to the house every day. And this was a common chore for children. If they were lucky, they had a yoke like this one and they could haul two buckets at a time carrying it on their shoulders. Now they used water just like we do for washing and bathing. So if you wanted to wash your hands, you would have a bucket full of water and a ladle for getting your hands wet. And then you would have some soap made 
from tallow, just like your candles, for lathering up. You might also have a pitcher instead of a ladle and a bucket. We would also have a wash tub for our weekly bath. We would use this wash tub for also our wash day for washing our clothes. We would use the scrub board and a brush and look at that Stanley in there. He's always willing to give a helping hand. And then another thing you would notice is that we know there's no electricity in this house. So they would use the hearth here for cooking their food. The pioneers used Dutch ovens for cooking their food and cast iron pots. Now they made a lot of things themselves, but they also had to bring some things in from other places. And you might be asking yourself, how did they get it here? How did the pioneers get here? Well, let's go outside and we're gonna look at a highway that the pioneers used at that time for helping them bring people and things to the homestead. Come outside. During the gold rush, you might have headed to the northern mines by traveling on the Sacramento River. This natural water highway was used by pioneers who would hop on a ferry boat in San Francisco and then travel up to Red Bluff. They would use that to get people and supplies up here. But as you know, many of the pioneers came here by covered wagon. Now imagine you're on the last leg of your journey and you get here with your wagon and there's this big river. How are you gonna get across? Well, some of the pioneers built platform ferries. And what they did is they would make a wooden platform and they would have ropes attached to it and then they would be able to pull animals, carriages, and people across the river and ferry them from one bank to the other. There used to be a ferry right here called the Adobe Ferry. Look at that flat Stanley over there. He looks like he's headed to the ferry boat landing but I suppose he could just turn himself into a kite and fly across the river. So people got supplies here on this natural water highway, but sometimes, like we talked about before, they made things themselves. And I wonder, how did they make things themselves without electricity? I think I hear somebody in the blacksmith shop. Let's go see what's happening in there.